We are going to create a stacked bar graph from the CO2 sector data that we've spent quite a bit of time playing around with. And um, you may not need to run this line of code again, uh, but in case you've jumped down to this point and started, we can go ahead and re-pull the data in from GitHub through this URL um, and then take a look at what the end of the data frame looks like. So we are going to do the same series of manipulations that we did on this data before. But as you can see, I have strung together a huge chain of methods here that basically will do all the things that we want to to the data. So we're going to take the data we read in. We're going to change the state column into the row index. We're going to drop the total row. Then we are going to sort the table by the total column in ascending um, in descending order. Then once we've done the sort, we don't need the total column anymore, so we'll drop it. And then last but not least, we will then uh, set this, uh, uh, we will then pull out um, the top n number of states depending on what we put in here. So for right now, I'm just going to pull out the four largest CO2 producers, but we can easily change this number from four into something else and then get a different number of states than four. So we'll go ahead and do that. And now we see um, this is not the head, this is actually the whole table. It just has the four rows for the top four sectors and we've eliminated um, all of the total columns. Now that we've sliced the data into the smaller data frame called top state sectors, we're ready to start creating our graph. So the first few lines that we have here are the uh, creating the instance of the figure with a slightly larger than the default figure size. And within that figure, we're creating a single subplot, which we are calling uh, AX. Within that plot, we are going to place a stacked bar for each one of the states from which we have um, extracted data. So there are four states and there will therefore be four bars. The way that um, we're going to reference each of these bars is by creating a, a NumPy array that uh, has a range of numbers starting with zero and going up to the number of states that we're using. So the way that we can uh, create this array without hard coding the number of states into it is to um, find the length of the um, data frame, which will give us the number of rows. And then there's a NumPy function called a range, which will generate a range ranging from zero to the number of rows in the table. So what I'm going to do is uh, uncomment this print statement here. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, comment out some of the rest of the code by using uh, triple single quotes because I don't at this point actually want to have it draw the graph. We just want to look at some of the preliminary data that we're assembling to build the graph. So I'll go ahead and run this. I can see two things. First of all, here's my big empty frame ready to have the um, plot be put into it. But also down here is the NumPy array that I created that has the number zero through three. So if I change the number of rows here um, <clears throat> from four to something else, then this range would automatically uh, have a different size. So since we've seen that, I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. Um, the other thing that I'm doing here is I'm going to extract the row and column labels. The states, which are the rows, I'm going to go through and um, find from the index of those rows 
what the label values are, and those will go into the row labels. These will represent the states um, that are going to be the bars in the chart. And then from the columns of the table, I will get the values of the five different sectors that um, are making up the stacked uh, bars in the chart. And so I'll pull those values out and put them in a uh, NumPy array that's called column labels. So if I want to see what these look like, I can just print them. Now, if I run this, I can see that the uh, the row labels do indeed um, list each of the states, and the column labels are each of the five sectors that I'm going to stack up in my bars. So I've got that preliminary work done. I'm going to go ahead and delete these lines now, since we saw what they did. Now, this is the more complicated part of creating the chart. So the problem is that um, when we want to have a stacked bar chart, each of the bars that we are adding to the stack um, has to know how far up the screen to be placed. So there is a um, argument that we pass into the um, method that creates the bar called uh, the bar called bottom and that value of bottom has to be the height of all of the bars that are underneath the one that we are currently stacking. So that creates a little bit of a complication here. Um, remember we are stacking one uh, the bars for one particular sector at a time on top of the previous sector. So we have to go through each of the sectors one at a time and, and do the stacking. And so what we're going to do here is find the number of columns that are in the table, because remember there's one column for each sector. And we're going to generate a range that starts from zero and goes up to however many columns there are, or I should say one less than the number of columns. It's going to go from zero to four, and that's going to be our sector number. So I'll uncomment this so that we can see what sector we're working on. <clears throat> okay, then we're going to do um, some tricky things here. So let's go ahead and comment out this, these last lines here. So um, this line here, what we're going to do is uh, basically examine what the um, values are in the column for the sectors that range from zero to one, uh, one less than the sector number that we're currently on. That's what uh, this part will do. This colon here means that we want, we want that information for every row. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and we can see what, um, what this looks like. So when it goes through the first loop, this would be when we are um, stacking the bars for the commercial sector. Those commercial sector bars are not sitting on top of anything else. So the um, underlying bars are basically nothing. Then when we go to the next loop, um, when we're doing the uh, electrical power bars, the electrical power bars are going to be sitting on top of the commercial bars. And so these are the heights of the commercial bars. And then on the second set of bars that we're going to stack, those are the residential bars. They are going to be sitting on top of the commercial bars and the electric bars and so on. So each time we go through a loop, 
the next uh, set of bars that we're putting on the chart has to sit on all the bars that are underneath it. So what I've done here is I've created a mechanism for basically um, listing all of the sectors that lie underneath the um, bars that we're currently plotting. So in order to get this sector sum number, I need to be, I need to add up all of these numbers going across the columns. So for the first one, it's going to be zero. For the second one, it's just going to be the commercial column. But the third bar that I stack has to be the sum of these two. The fourth one that I stack, that is number three, has to be the sum of these and so on. So um, what I do here to create the sector sums is I take this expression that I created right here that gives me the, um, the uh, columns that are lying underneath the one that I'm currently plotting. And that's uh, this expression right here. And I just take the sum of them going across the columns because I'm going sideways. I'm not going, um, not going up and down the columns, but going across the rows across the column axis. So um, since we've seen what these two lines do, I'm going to comment them out. And now I'm going to uncomment the sector sum line. Actually, we can leave this in here. Let's go ahead and run that. So now I can see on the first go around, the, um, the first set of bars that I'm stacking are not sitting on top of anything. So their bottom is zero. The second one is sitting on one set of, the second set of bars is sitting on one lower set of bars and here's their total. And then here's the total that the third set of bars will sit on, the total that the fourth one will sit on, and then here's the total that the fifth one will sit on. And so now that I've calculated the height that the new bars are gonna sit on top of, that those sector sums are what I need to put in for the value of bottom. So we're now in a position where we can actually let um, iPlot go ahead and create the bars. So now it is going to go ahead and uh, for each time it runs through the loop, it will uh, create the next set of bars. It's going to create one bar for each of the range of bars that I created up here. And for the heights of those bars, it is um, going to pull out the, um, the height uh, or the uh, amount of that sector CO2 for all of the state rows. And it's going to stack that on top of the sums that I calculated up here. Um, the last part then is where I create the ticks. Those would be the uh, labels that go along the bottom. Those are going to be taken from the row labels, which is the state. So underneath of each of the state bars, it's going to show me the state name. And then it's going to create a figure legend that will show me the uh, colors of the five sectors that we're stacking up on the stack bars. So um, let's get rid of our last print statement here and go ahead and run it. All right, let's shrink it down a little bit so we can see better. So here's the final product. We can see that here are our four st uh, stack state bars, um, one for each of the four largest emitters of CO2, and they're labeled underneath. And here is the uh, key where I put in the sector names along with the colors. So one of the advantages of doing this programmatically is that I'm, I haven't hard coded anything about the number of states that I want to plot. I can simply go up here if I don't want to have four bars. Let's say that I want to have the eight top states. All I have to do is rerun that code. Now I've included more states in my slice. And now if I rerun the part that generates a graph, I see that I now have the top eight states. So it's uh, a much more um, 
useful kind of visualization than the pie charts because as I said with the pie charts there is no uh, relationship of the total amount of CO2 that's being output by the state to the size of either the pies themselves or any of the slices but here with the stacked bar chart the states that are the greatest emitters of CO2 have the tallest bars so we can see that by the height of the bars but we can also uh, easily see the composition. So for example, here, as we noted before, California has a relatively high component of uh, transportation. Texas has a, a high amount of industrial um, CO2 production and uh, so does Louisiana. So if we really want to go for the gusto, we can um, do every single state and the District of Columbia by changing this to 51. So here's all 51 states in DC. Now when we create the bar chart, uh, yeah, the labels are a little bit of a mess, but we can definitely see how the CO2 emissions vary among states and in particular we can see how huge the emissions of Texas are compared to all the other states and California which is in second place is also considerably larger. Um, in this particular case it would actually probably be good to do a horizontal bar chart and um, if we did that then the labels would not be on top of each other they would be along like this along the uh, left margin.